Hello everyone, myself Soumya, <laughs> Assistant Professor in CSA AML Department, MLR Institute of Technology. So, my subject is web programming and today's topic is introduction to web programming. So, in this PPT, we are going to discuss about what is web programming, what are the components of web programming, so what are the different framework and libraries we are using for the web programming and what is the future of web programming. So, first of all, what is web programming? So, every day we use so many web pages. Um, and sometimes we feel to create our own web pages, but some people they do not know how to create a web page. So, at the end of this session or the end of this video, so you will be able to understand what are the prerequisites or what are the uh, basic sources to develop our own web page. So, a formal definition for the web programming is developing or it is a process of creating dynamic web pages or we can call dynamic web pages or interactive websites. So, what is the meaning of dynamic or interactive? For example, I have a website, our MLRIT website only. So, we have a student login over there. So, I am just asking for the roll number of the student and some password of the student followed by one submit button. So, if I click on that submit button, I will get my profile that is that that is nothing but a student profile. So, this is nothing but when I submit something or some details to the server, I am getting some response. So, this type of web pages I can refer as interactive web pages or dynamic web pages. So, why we are specifying dynamic in the sense we also have static web pages. So, there we do not get any interaction or there we do not get any response from the uh, server. So, here web programming is nothing but it is a process of creating especially dynamic web pages or interactive web pages. So, for this purpose we are using different languages, different technologies. So, based on that languages and technologies, so uh, components of web programming are divided into three types. The first one is front end development, back end development and database management. So, what is the front end development? So, whenever you open a web page, you will see some user interface over there, uh, some web design you will see there. So, that is nothing but front end development. For example, if you open our MLRIT.ac.in, there we will get home button, about button, departments button. So, so many buttons are there and on the home page, we will also get some notifications or announcements, updates, right. So, whatever you are seeing on the web page, so that is nothing but front end part. So, to develop or to design this front end part, you are using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So, for any type of web page, we mainly use these three technologies, HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So, HTML is nothing but hypertext markup language, which will provide a basic structure for your web page. So, it will only provide the basic structure, but according to web programming definition, we need to create the interactive facility for our web page. So, that interactive facility or uh, dynamic facility or dynamic feature can be added using this JavaScript. So, by using JavaScript, you can add the interactivity or the dynamic capability to the web page. And coming to CSS, cascading style sheet is used to provide some styling for your web page. So, if I want to add some background color, foreground color, some uh, animations, all those things you can do using CSS. So, these are the three main things which you are using for front end part. So, HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And coming to the second one, second component that is back end development. So, as we have taken one example in the previous slide, so that is you are submitting the user name, I mean roll number and the password followed by a submit button. So, if I click on this button, the corresponding rule number and the corresponding password will be submitted to the server. So, the server should take this result and should process this result. So, the so server should have some program to process this, to take this, to generate the response. So, that is nothing but back end development. So, at server side, some program will be there to process this data and to generate the response. So, that thing you are calling as back end. So, for this back end based on our requirement, based on our application, we use different technologies. For example, PHP we use, Python we use, Ruby we use, Java, etc. So, we have so many back end development technologies based on the requirement and application, we use different languages. And coming to the next component that is database management. 
So, the user is submitting, the server is taking and processing that is ok, but by the future res, uh, reference we need to store all this data somewhere. So, that is nothing but database management. So, whenever you give something I mean through the front end, so through the front end you are entering something, so that will be sent to the server. So, server will process this, server will process this, but in the future if it wants to access the data, so it needs to store the data in the database. So, that is the purpose of database here. So, we can use two different types of databases here, one is relational database and the other one is no SQL database. So, as we know relational database which uses uh, tables to store the data. So, we have some queries and commands to retrieve the data, store the data, delete the data right. So, in the same way no SQL databases are also there. So, which is not like a relational database it is different I mean it will store the data in different format not like tables for the example for this no SQL database is MongoDB. So, like this database management will be used. So, these are the three main components in the web programming. So, that we can um, cover in this full diagram. So, this is front end, this is back end and this back end only the database is also covering here. So, here front end whatever you can see on the screen the image or the buttons whatever it may be. So, whatever you are seeing on the web page that is nothing but front end. So, front end can be developed using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So, the user can directly see this front end any user and now whenever you are raising some request for example, what is my request? So, I am just entering my roll number and then password followed by submit button. So, I want to check my uh, attendance percentage. So, this rule number and password will be sent as a request to the server. So, now the server has to check whether this rule number is existing in the database or not. Why? Because he is something like a second year or third year student, he already registered in the website, right? So, now and that means already the server has these details. So, now server has to check whether these details are available or not, then how it will check? It will go to the database. Why? Because the server has already saved this detail while the registration process. So, now it will check whether the rule number and password are correct or existing or not. Then this database will give some response, yes it is there in my database. Now, the server will check, ok. So, this is correct, now I generate the response. The server will generate one response. What is that response? Ok, your details are correct, you can uh, open your page. So, after logging into my page, so it will be displaying my details. What details? What is your name, roll number, section and followed by I have some button here to check my attendance. If I click on this button again, attendance button, again the request will be sent to the server. So, what is the request? I want to check my attendance. Now, the server needs to calculate the attendance. So, where is the attendance available? Again the attendance is available in the database only. So, every day whatever the faculty is entering the attendance that will be saved in the database through this server. So, now the server will take the attendance from the database and it will calculate. So, the database will give you the individual attendance. I want to get the attendance from 1 to 30 average of July 1st to July 30 consider right. So, now the server, uh, the database will provide individual day attendance. Now, the server will get all these attendance and it will calculate the average, then that average will be sent as a response to the student. So, this is the complete web programming process. So, front end, in the back end we have server as well as database. So, the database we may use SQL or no SQL database. And coming to this back end languages or back end programming, we can use Django services, Python, Java, PHP according to our requirement, we can change this technology. So, what are frameworks and libraries? So, till now we discussed about front end, back end and database, but along with that we also have frameworks and libraries which will make our process simple. So, um, some languages like consider JavaScript. So, in the JavaScript, we have some predefined libraries like jQuery. So, which will provide so many functionalities for animations and other things. So, directly we can use them without writing the 
code number of lines so that is the use of frameworks and libraries so this will provide some set of apis or set of library functions which will make the process of creating web programming or web page simple so example for these frameworks and libraries are angular js as i told you jquery is one of the library angular js is one type of framework which will provide uh, a, a lot of functions modules uh, to make our process simple so till now we discussed in general what is web programming what are what are the prerequisites for web programming and this is according to our mlrit syllabus so this syllabus contains five units and five different units are related to five different technologies so if you complete all these five units then you can able to develop or design your own web page uh, why because this five units include the front end technologies back end technologies as well as database management and libraries and frameworks also so by using all these things we can develop our own web page so coming to the first unit html and javascript so uh, according to the previous slides these are used for the front end development so using html we can develop or we can design a basic structure for your page and using javascript you can provide the interactive feature or dynamic facility for your web page so in the first part that is html will be covering some different tags like image tag list tag table tag frame tag form tag right and the same way javascript so it is a programming which will provide the dynamic feature for your web page so in this uh, it is a programming language so we need to know the structure of that program so how to declare the variables what are the different uh, function how to create a function so how to use that function so all those things we can uh, learn in the javascript unit and coming to the second unit it is angular js so angular js is also one of the framework so it is a framework which is available in the javascript so it is not a special software simply you are using a framework which is a part of your javascript so it is used to make the process simple by providing some predefined directories predefined modules predefined filters right so all those things we are going to discuss in the second unit and coming to third unit php so this is what this is a back end technology so php is uh, it is a scripting language so it is also a programming language the server side programming language so if it is a programming language we need to know the structure how to declare the variables how to use them how to define a function uh, how to process the input do we have any loops in that so all those things we are going to discuss in php along with that here uh, in this unit you are going to connect your program to the database also so in this database you are using sql mysql so how you connecting your php program to your mysql to retrieve the data to update the data so all those things you are going to learn in the third unit and coming to fourth unit jquery actually it is a library it is a javascript library so it will provide so many predefined functions and modules which will make our process simple like animations uh, like event handler so if something happens how to handle that event so by using simply a predefined function we can handle that event so all those predefined functions are available in this library called jquery and coming to the last unit that is flask flask is actually it is a module in python so it is a lightweight python web framework so it is also a framework which is provided by python so by using this we can make our process simple so it will also provide some uh, uh, http methods templates static files so all these are we have predefined files predefined routes or predefined processes by using them uh, how to create our own web page and how to make our process simple all those things we are going to discuss in these five units so if we observe in the first unit it has covered front end technologies and in the second unit it is a framework in the third unit again it is a back end technology and in the fourth unit it is a library and fifth unit is also a framework so by learning all these technologies of course something is missed here that is database so here in php only we have database also so i have to connect to the database that also we learn in the third unit so by learning all these technologies or all these units you'll be able to design your own 
web page. So, what is the future of web programming? So, till now we discussed ok. So, till now we are using all these technologies simply to develop a normal web page which we are using in general, but the future or the current technology is mainly on AI everything wherever you go. So, everywhere we have artificial intelligence or machine learning. So, now we need to incorporate these AI technologies with our web programming. So, that is the future of our web programming. Of course, we already have some type of some sort of applications based on this connection AI and web programming like AI power chart boots right. So, in the customer service we are using AI customer chart boots right. So, they can um, they can simply uh, communicate with you based on your browsed history. So, whatever you are browsing based on that it will chart with you and it will give you some information right based on some uh, question answer process right. So, that is the future of web programming. So, we need to incorporate the AI technologies into our web programming. So, coming to the summary. So, in this session or in this video we discussed about what is web programming, what are the different components we need to uh, design a web page right. So, what are the different technologies you are using front end, back end and database along with these three we also need frameworks and libraries and we have also seen the syllabus of our MLRIT and which covers all these five units and after end of this uh, complete session not the session the complete syllabus will be able to develop your own web page. Thank you.